Yeah, we have quite a few people here. Haven't said hello to everyone. Um, so going going into the topic is how to enhance customer experience through event-driven APIs. Um, so obviously APIs have been around for for some time, and most of the enterprises have a system to expose them either internally or externally. Um, so the APIs which have been implemented over the last few years mostly fetch information. You know the public APIs. So the, the topic today will look at ways and means of providing information which is more real time uh, using event driven APIs, which isn't yeah. pushing and pulling information. Uh, and so for this round table, it is interactive. So please put your questions in the chat as they come up and we can answer them later after uh, the introductions. Okay, so this is gonna be structured. We've got uh, quite experienced uh, presenters here. Shiro, who's solution architect, uh, working closely with customers. I've met Shiro before on Singapore API days. Dasana is head of solution architecture and financial services and open banking, okay? With uh, full stack experience and all the credentials one would, would expect, right? <laughs> so I know that there's uh, some slides to get everybody up to speed. And uh, so we'll just be going through that to, to kick, kick things off. And, um, take questions, anything that comes to mind. And we also have some questions which came in before the event uh, through the registration and we'll be using those later. So so with that introduction, I would like to hand it over to the presenters. I'm sure you know who's gonna go first. Yep. Okay, <clears throat> thanks Jonathan for that intro. So um, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Um, so let's get started, uh, as Jonathan said, like I've We'd like to give you a quick intro into the topic, and then we can get into the discussion. So, um, so API management is not something new. And uh, I mean, if you look at organizations today, it's safe to say that the majority of those expose APIs, both uh, externally and internally, for their operations. Uh, but if you look at these APIs, um, most of these follow the the same uh, re request response pattern. And uh, uh, so I think if we, if we look at a uh, rough definition of what event-driven APIs are, uh, so uh, event-driven APIs basically are APIs which keep pushing information to a subscriber whenever there is a change. So there's a difference here. You basically don't wait until someone asks for information once that initial um, communication channel is established then information just starts flowing so uh, they're called event driven apis obviously because uh, behind the scenes there are a lot of event driven activity happening but uh, if you look at the terminology out there you can also uh, see the terms as uh, of streaming APIs or asynchronous APIs because these also do describe um, uh, the nature of uh, these APIs. So uh, there are a few paradigm shifts when we look at uh, uh, when we actually compare the synchronous and the asynchronous or the non-event driven and the event driven APIs. So um, if you, if you look at this diagram, uh, so the top uh, uh, part of the diagram um, is basically the flow that would happen when uh, it's a non-event driven API, when it's a, it's a normal request response sort of a uh, API. So the, there's an API consumer and an API provider, obviously, and uh, the API consumer would first subscribe to this API with the intent of um, saying, okay, I'm subscribing to this API and why I'm doing that is uh, throughout this period of subscription, I will be re requesting you uh, information that, uh, uh, that you can provide to me. And then whenever the client needs something on the client app side, uh, the client will basically send a request with the necessary API uh, security keys and so on. And the provider would basically get that information and send it back. Now, um, 
in this model, so the, the, the provider side basically just responds to whatever request that comes. And it doesn't really do much state management or anything like that. Whereas the consumer will have to, I mean, especially if you're, uh, uh, you have an application which uh, essentially is, um, is tracking status of some operation. And so all of that information needs to be handled at the client side. Now, with um, event-driven APIs, the bottom part of this slide, uh, again, you have the consumer and the provider. But the consumer, again, does subscribe to the API. And here the intent is I'm subscribing. I'm giving you a communication uh, point. So it can be an endpoint. It can be a channel uh, and so on. Uh, and I want you to start sending me information based on certain parameters that I've sent with this whenever there is something new that I would like to get. So what the pro so with this model, the complexity of managing that's the information, the stateful information and all of that gets pushed to the provider side because now the provider needs to uh, remember how to call back, uh, what needs to be sent and so on. And then uh, whereas the client will simply focus more mainly on visualizing what they get. OK, so uh, given that we have gone through the major difference, uh, so let's take a look at uh, how, like, what technologies are there out there in order to support this. So we have, we have a few technologies. And out of those, I've just taken uh, a couple of uh, technologies that you see a lot or hear a lot. So the first. Uh, technology that could be used for event-driven APIs is the use of webhooks. So in this case, um, you register with the API provider, uh, as shown in this diagram, uh, using an HTTP call. And then you also provide an endpoint through which the provider can get back to you with the necessary information whenever it's available. So the provider, again, talks to the client uh, using an HTTP call, HTTP post, whenever new information is available. So this um, this endpoint needs to be publicly accessible. And um, so because of that, uh, sometimes this is mostly used in server-to-server -server type of communication and not really directly talking to the client. The next... Um, uh, technology that is used is web sockets. So here you open up a channel and it's bi-directional. So you again do the registration and the registration is complete when that uh, channel is uh, upgraded to be now used. And in this case, uh, essentially uh, web socket frames uh, that basically contain this information is uh, continuously sent to the client. So uh, the the uh, like today, if you look at most browser-driven applications, uh, then you would be using web socket technology because uh, this is supported by uh, a lot of browsers now. And then um, you basically have the ability to uh, keep on getting information as notifications and so on. So the third flavor is server sent events. Uh, server sent events is uh, very much similar to uh, WebSocket because there's uh, continuous flow of events, but it's unidirectional. So uh, you basically, again, establish the connection and then you keep on sending uh, the events. But uh, the, the, the direction is uh, always from the server to the client. And this is good for instances where you have uh, low bandwidth and you don't really need to uh, support that both way communication channel. So these are the, uh, uh, these are some of the technologies that are used when you want to support event driven APIs in organizations and in, in API management tools also. So uh, then I think uh, what I would 
just like to show you before we go on to the discussion, and maybe we can return back to this diagram, is a rough um, reference uh, architecture that shows how event-driven APIs will fit into uh, uh, your overall IT landscape. So you basically have the services and then the messaging layer because there's a lot of messaging. And then to complement that, you would have some integration components. And then you have the API management layer. Uh, so these, these, API, uh, these APIs are basically going to be managed APIs. So the tool needs to support the various protocols and uh, then also provide the usual benefits that comes from API management. So I guess with that, uh, we basically can open up the uh, floor for questions and uh, any discussions um, around this topic. Well, th thanks, Shiro, for pre pre presenting that. I hope it's maybe for some a refresher, for others quite, quite educational. And, and it can show that these event-driven APIs can coexist within existing architecture. It's not always an event streaming technology that is needed, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I guess, I mean, yeah. I suppose uh, we, we, we welcome people to ask their questions on the chat. Some have come in earlier uh, through, through the registration process. Um, and it comes back to the topic of, of this presentation is, Specifically, with an example, what can, if possible, what can event-driven APIs do more for the consumer? So we talked about technology. What what can they do for the consumer? And that could be maybe the consumer of services or the 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 actual customer experience. Okay, Shiro has dropped off. So okay, okay. Let's, Oh, she's, she's back. So, uh, Shiro, you're back. I just posed a question on customer experience or consumer of the services, the people using these uh, APIs. What, what, how does it serve them? Yeah. Who would like to take that question? OK. Um, yeah, let me take that. Um, so basically, um, so when it comes to um, consumer interactions so or user um, app channels, uh, especially like you know, web portals, mobile applications, uh, kiosks, um, they need um, real time information, real time activity, right? So, in that case, the event driven architecture uh, provides a way of pushing real time updates, real time data into the um, you know, these um, you know, uh, front end channels or the interaction channels. So it, it provides a more um, you know um, you know active experience to the customer. Uh, we might have you know the st uh, standard traditional REST APIs at the back, but we push data real time into these um, you know interaction channels. That's where the consumer uh, story uh, comes in uh, with the event-driven architecture. And within the um, uh, because if you look at um, you know. Uh, Backend systems they have different workflows. The workflows can uh, work on an event-driven architecture as well, and they will be uh, these workflows might notify using a synchronous channels like you know emails, um, you know SMSs, MMS, uh, things like that. So again, it's a way of uh, consumer interaction with event-driven architecture. Yeah. Yeah. So common question coming up would be, um, and by the way, um, we have a good audience. Welcome participation. It is just through the chat here, so uh, not as interactive as in person. Um, the questions that come up are always about evolution. You know, I'm running in a financial services off a monolith, right? I want to break it down into microservices and then and eventually get to some form of API pulling information and then event driven APIs, right? So could you could you go into maybe an example of a journey, people going from monolith all the way to event driven APIs? And can all these these uh, consumer producer uh, coexist, right? You have both type of APIs. Yeah, I lost connection. I'm going back in now. Yeah. Okay. Okay, she's she was talking to someone. Um, Shiro, you want to take that question or? Uh, 
Uh, Shiro, did you catch the question? <laughs> I think you were talking to somebody. Uh... Hi, Shiro, can you hear? Okay, I think she's frozen. Okay, so let me take that question. Um... Okay, um, let me take that question. So, right. yeah, if you look at, um, you know, monoliths, right? So, um, monoliths have been um, interacting, like the interaction with uh, monolith, uh, monolithic layers or, you know, uh, you know, legacy systems has been with, you know, file systems and they moved on to um, API systems which are synchronous um, from SOAP APIs to REST APIs. Um, so what we can do is um, when they come through the journey of moving from, you know, monolithic systems to, you know, REST APIs, uh, sorry, uh, SOAP APIs and then comes to REST APIs, they can use the same model of uh, synchronous interaction to transform into a synchronous interaction because the concepts like APIs, the contracts would be the same within the uh, uh, event-driven model. Only thing is uh, there will be additional, um, you know, concepts like, you know, a messaging channels, um, you know, uh, different protocols, the, um, you know, things like, you know, application transport headers um, will come on. Um, and uh, so we will uh, go on an evolutionary architecture where we will use some of the existing uh, data that we uh, exchange through REST APIs and transform that to a more real-time uh, experience. So it's a gradual uplift um, uh, that we are looking at. Um, and we will choose which um, technology to fit into different use cases under the uh, event-driven uh, architecture uh, banner. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what what's been your experience in in financial services, Dasana? Yeah, I mean, uh, in in financial services, there are uh, there are a lot of areas that um, event driven uh, architecture being applied. Um, from the user experience channels, um, they they want to have more real time experience. Also, uh, what we have done is we have exposed um, event driven APIs from back end uh, systems to uh, digital channels, um, and there are, you know, uh, fraud and risk systems, uh, which is part and parcel of banking systems, right? So, um, uh, in order to act on a risk or act on a fraud, it has to be real time. So, it, uh, there has been a lot of real time architectures being uh, built around ri risk and uh, fraud. And as well as um, you know, in the compliance space, um, there are there are a lot of uh, notification that needs to be uh, relayed to regulators and and concerned parties, um, and then you know, uh, real time and you know, even different architectures are coming into that space as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It might, might it be that uh, if I could summarize that there there can be data sets or event driven data sets that are just not utilized. Yep. And, uh, that does really, yeah. yeah. I'm seeing quite a few people on the uh, on the very quiet chat and a range of job titles from students to solution architects, engineers, product managers. So I, I wonder what your your take on this is from your perspective, uh, addressing this to the, the participants. Uh, please put it in the chat. So, so um, you've, you you just talked about, and this is a question that came in. Uh, you talked about synchronous asynchronous. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of interest in the asynchronous a a um, API specifications. Yep. How does that fit into the event-driven APIs? Are they the same thing or different? Uh, they are different. Um, so we can compare asynchronous API uh, to open API specification. Uh, in uh, REST world, uh, synchronous world. So what async API uh, is trying to do or async API specification is trying to do is to kind of standardize um, the interaction model uh, with 
um, you know, event-driven uh, system players. Uh, it borrows some of the concepts from the uh, open API specification. You know, um, you know, the way that the APIs are defined, the, the constructs. Additional to that, um, it brings in the additional construct of identifying uh, messaging channels, uh, the messaging channel constructs, the protocols. And um, it, I mean, when it comes to uh, protocol, it needs to support uh, more than uh, one protocol uh, compared to um, REST APIs. It needs to support, you know, um, AMQP, um, the um, Kafka, uh, the um, you know web sockets, um, you know uh, web hooks, um, servers send events and things like that. Um, so basically, in in async API, it needs to cover the um, connecting into a messaging system, subscribing, uh, publishing, um, you know those entire life cycle. So async API is a specification uh, uh, on top of uh, which basically enables event-driven architecture. So yeah, I mean th these are two different things, but you know they collaborate each other to make things work. So it seems to be something that any architect, any of the people present, might need to to learn about or or at least uh, work towards. Would you would you say? I mean I don't know if you work with that open banking. Frameworks or other frameworks uh, is is it becoming a standard? Is it already it, there? It, it's it's be becoming a standard because the 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 benefit that we are getting from standardizing the interaction model is you will be able to use different models, uh, different implementation of event driven architecture, uh, but use the same definition in interacting with them. So yeah, it's getting traction. Yeah. It's yeah, it's, a, it's a, it seems interesting because then you could use different technologies or toolkits underlying it yep. to, to get the same outcomes. It's, so we've, we've got about enough abstraction. Yeah, yeah. We've got a, about five minutes. Okay. Afterwards, for any. It's um, a good time to ask. Um, I will continue with the yes. Yeah, so Sana, yes. you were break, yeah, you are, you were breaking. I, I think you may need to repeat. Um, yeah. I was just saying, there's only like five minutes left of this roundtable session, and the speakers okay. yourself can be reached uh, reached afterwards. Or how could people contact you if, yeah, when they have the questions? Did. Yeah, they um, they can reach me on the chat, and uh, they can reach me on the um, email as well. Yeah. So if okay. you have any yeah. questions, it, yeah, you can put that on the chat here. Yeah. yeah, do share your email address if you're if you're willing to do that. I think there's quite a few people here who may have questions afterwards. Yeah. Um, I and mean, the, just, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Go way, ahead. Yeah, the other way is like you can uh, drop into WS2 booth. And you can, you know, uh, share your questions on the booth as well. Yeah. So this is quite a high level. I mean, well, it's high level. It's detailed. It's an introduction. It's a holistic view of event-driven APIs, right? Um, yep. is, there, is there anything else you would, you would? I see your profile. You advise a lot of the people attending to type of levels today, technical C CTOs and so forth. Any other factors mm -hmm. that need to be considered, sort of enabling event-driven APIs? Indeed, that affect API platforms from your perspective. Yeah, because I mean, one of the uh, architectural benefits that we get from event-driven architecture is the loose coupling. So, um, especially uh, in, in in workflows, right? So, uh, what we can do is like we can enable um, you know um, uh, background activities and let them throw events based on the status of the activity that they are running. So it's an important um, uh, architectural concept uh, when it comes to um, you know, uh, building an enterprise-grade enterprise um, platform. Um, this loose coupling enables you to uh, provide a seamless experience uh, to the customer. So the, one of the main benefits that we are getting out of EDA is that that loose coupling and yeah. 
um, and, and the experience that we can build on top of that uh, to the customer. Yes, yeah, so, so you, yeah. you, you talked earlier some examples in, again, financial services. Uh, I think that's your expertise in around compliance, around credit card risk. Yep. Um, have you have you seen any any specific examples where loose just to make it more more material, where loose coupling um, is is a, a a necessity perhaps? Yeah. So if you look at um, you know if you look at a specific example, a loan origination, right? So um, we can the banks can provide the customer loan in minutes. Um, so what happens is. Uh, the loan origination process will be built on top of a, a web flow and each step like you know the validation of your identity and then validation of your transactions your uh, you know transaction prof profile with different banks uh, your accounts uh, you know your liabilities all that checks and uh, you know steps can be asynchronous so you don't, the customer doesn't want to or doesn't need to wait until these checks are performed. Um, you can go through the uh, origination process. The, uh, the customer can go through the loan application. And each time these validations are uh, completed, there will be notifications coming on to your um, application process. Uh, so it's a you know um, a great experience that they take because, I mean, especially like, you know, micro loans and you know um you know same day loans and things like that um it definitely um help the user experience and as well as it increases the um you know customer base of banks if you can provide that experience uh, so we are working with uh, i have been involved with multiple banks in providing that experience um and yeah so event-driven architecture helps a lot in that aspect. Yeah, that, that, that's great. I mean, taking it back to the topic of this uh, presentation around table is, is about customer experience yeah. and, the, and the real need for information closer to real time rather yeah. than just fetching information yeah. like balances. And I, th yeah. I think you've, you've explained with, with Shiro how that can be enabled through a range of different technologies and then abstracted through... Um, standards which relate to async API specs. Okay, um, so we're coming to the, the tail end of this session. Just keep it open for anybody who's who's got any curious questions. I think we've we've covered what we needed to cover. Would there be any other things that you wanted to talk about, Sana? Um, not really. I, this is what we want to kind of share with you. Um, how we, first of all, like what event-driven uh, architecture or event-driven APIs mean and how you can basically use that for augmenting your user experience. Yeah. Great, great. Yeah. So I hope that's been useful to everyone here. Again, uh, thank you for staying for the, the whole session. And what we'll do is we'll just, we'll just be here for the next is five minutes. Is that okay? Just in case any, any further questions come to mind. Um, is that okay, Dasana? Yep.